Everything I say tonight is something you already know. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know. I'm quite sure of that. I think it's important to make some of these ideas explicit because otherwise, the general public, the people who pay for our research, those benefactors who are eventually attracted to science, have a very distorted view of what it is we do. The reason this all came about, basically, is that I started teaching this course at Columbia just as a sort of a, I don't know, on a lark, called Ignorance, What We Don't Know About Science. And the basis of the course was, I mean, we do some readings and all the rest of that, but we meet once a week for a couple hours, and I invite members of the science faculty to come in and talk for two hours to this class of students, not all of whom are science majors, about only half of whom are science majors, about what they don't know. Not the big questions, not what is life, how did the universe begin, but really, how did you choose this question over that question? Why is it this particular unknown that you're interested in rather than that one? What will happen if you get to know this? What will happen if you don't get to know it? And what I have found from that is that when you ask scientists to talk to people about what they don't know, they're remarkably understandable. They're not as opaque as when you ask them to say, to tell you what's going on in their lab, and the next thing you have is some alphabet soup of, you know, proteins or particles or who knows what. So I think part of the idea is to talk about more about what we don't know. I think the common way we think that things go is we start out not knowing something, we get an education, we learn stuff, and we gain knowledge. I'd like to suggest that this arrow could work the other way as well. That what do we do with that knowledge once we get it? I mean, really, do we care about the facts once they're there? It's important to have them, but really, what is the purpose of them? The purpose of them is to frame a better question, to come up with a better quality of ignorance. How do we get to that really deep level of ignorance? And I would suggest to you that the way we do that is failure, curiously enough. Because it's when you fail that you realize, oh, I thought I knew that, but then I did this experiment and it failed. Now, why did it fail? So there's something I didn't know that I didn't know in there somewhere. And that's when things, I think, get really interesting. So how much failure? Do we think about how much failure? I believe that we regularly underestimate the amount of failure that's acceptable. I don't think 100% would work, but I think it's much larger than we think it is. So let me give you an example from the natural world. If you delve into the predator-prey literature, you find out that these guys are successful on something like 7% of their attempts. 7% is the best they do. And these are the top of the food chain. So 93% of the time, they're unsuccessful. So where do we go with this? So what's the way forward with ignorance, doubt, uncertainty, and failure? Because after all, we do have a public that pays the bills and all the rest of that. And are we going to sell them on this somehow or another? Can we sell ourselves on this? Can we sell our students on this? Science is moving away from this kind of somewhat hubristic view of it being able to answer everything and be the ultimate answer to many questions, to deliver a kind of a truth, to deliver certainty. And, and I, for one, kind of think we should welcome this kind of maturing of science into a place where we understand uncertainty a bit, we understand doubt, and we make use of them. Uncertainty is one of these funny words. I mean, to the general public, uncertainty means you don't know what you're doing. But we work with uncertainty. For us, uncertainty is a quantifiable factor that we know and understand in some ways and can explore. And I think we have to make that clearer. It's precisely when things are most mysterious, when they're, they're most uncertain, that we are most creative in thinking what to do about it. 